Hello, my name is Henry. I got all nines in my GCSEs and A stars in all of my end of year tests and mocks across my A levels. I don't know my A level results yet, but I have been consistently achieving A stars. And today I'm going to be doing a video detailing how my vision changed in five key ways, five key points in how my vision changed from GCSEs to A levels. How did I adapt to continue producing consistently top A star grades? If you're new here, please subscribe. I do all sorts of revision content, GCSE and A-level. And also, everyone, please make sure you leave a like. I'm going to get straight into this with point number one. And point number one is digitalization. I realised roughly in my at the start of my second year that as much as possible of my A-level content should be online. In the first year, I went in with big folders. I wrote pages of notes every single lesson. I was writing all my flashcards on paper. And I just realised eventually that this is far less far more difficult to organize. So I, I just rarely got out the folders. In my actual A-level exam season, I didn't touch a single note I took at all. So what I learned instead of that is I would now take, in the second year, I took my laptop into college. I didn't take big notes. I didn't take big pages. I took my laptop into college. And often I would literally have flashcards open on my computer. And instead of taking notes, I'd mainly just put, I'd mainly just flashcard content. So this will work for science, history, anything like that. But that's something I'd really recommend is digitalized. If you can take a laptop into your lessons or just make sure you've organized folders, make sure you're very organized digitally and in particular flashcards. I would use Quizlet, but there are other flashcard methods and websites you can use. But I found Quizlet very useful and I realized fast that Quizlet flashcards and digital flashcards were better for me than paper flashcards. So be careful of that and be mindful of organization across a levels because each a level subject is much bigger in gcse you don't really need that as much because there's much less content per subject so not as much of it needs to be digital point number two is balance so for a levels i worked much harder across the two years of college than i did across the last two years of gcse's in gcse's i basically only worked really really hard six months away from gcse's six to eight months away from gcse's so there was much more concentrated effort across GCSEs, but in A-levels, this effort had to be maintained for much, much longer. You can't really revise. If you want to aim for A-stars and A's, you can't really revise just at the end of your A-levels. So what I'd recommend is going in st from the start, from the start with effort. That's what I did, and that's how I had to adapt to the sheer amount of content in A-levels. I was from literally day one or the first few weeks producing flashcards, producing, you know, writing extra work, doing Seneca. So go into A-levels and from the start, start working hard. Obviously, you're allowed a couple of weeks to settle in. If you want to have more help and you're aiming for A-stars, I'm doing a crash course for £5. That's going to be one hour long where I'm literally going to give you as much help as I can, targeted towards the first year of A-levels so you can hit the ground running and aim straight for A-stars from the start. I'm going to be talking through things I regret not doing, things I did that really helped me, and all my A-star advice for any subject, so that key principles in revision. So please sign up for that. I couldn't recommend it enough. I'm literally just going to be giving you as much information as I can and giving all the information I wish I had when I started year one, because it will save you a lot of time, and it saved me a lot of time too when I worked out these things that I'll be detailing on that course. So yeah, that's point number two is balance or in terms of like you need to be more consistently putting effort in, but there's less concentrated effort each day. So there is time for more balance, but you need to be good at consistently across two years. I can't stress that, stress that enough, but A-levels is much longer grind than GCSEs are. Point number three is independence. A-levels are much more independent than GCSEs. You get more free time usually. There's just less help in general. I definitely had to adapt to that independence. And I adapted to that independence. This is where I'm going to bring in point four, which is YouTube. But I adapted to that independence in lots of different ways. So there's much more free time. So you need to be kind of ruthless with your, with your schedule. You need to make sure you're getting work done. I got a diary. I've talked about my diaries before. But that really helped me make sure I knew the tasks I had to do. And... The next point is YouTube, and that's that's why that's linked to independence, is I've realised on A-levels, I use YouTube so much more. I'm going to be doing videos detailing all of the best YouTubers for each for each um, subject in A-levels, all of the big subjects. But YouTube is actually a really, really powerful tool for education. I made sure I found and subscribed to the best YouTubers for specific subjects, and I watch a lot of YouTube because they can really reteach content 
in ALOGS, there's a lot of content, so you may miss out on content at class or anything like that. And YouTube was really powerful for learning content for me across A-Levels. So I would say I used YouTube more as part of more independent learning in general. So A-Levels were a lot more independent. Finally, and this is a little bit more focused towards the humanities subjects, but my revision in A-Levels was much, much more essay based. So I took history and politics, although this does apply to other subjects, any subject really where you have to write essays. And what I would do is I would literally bring out, I'd print out loads and loads of essay plans, or I'd do some on my laptop as well, because it's good to be digital too. Um, and I would literally just write essay plan upon essay plan upon essay plan for all sorts of potential questions. You can Google like politics, practice questions, and then your exam board, A-level, and it just comes up with loads. And I would literally just go through them. I'd be doing four or five a week by the end of it by the end of A levels. So lots and lots of essay plans. Your vision is much more essay plan based, especially for the humanities. For GCSE subjects, it's much more light. You don't really need to plan as many essays because if you have a couple facts, for example, in history, you can go in and write a 12 mark question. But in history, A level, some of the questions are more like 30 markers. You need much more essay knowledge and essay skills. So I would essay plan a lot, lot more and my vision was much more focused on essay writing. I really hope that video was helpful. This is part of my A-level preparation series. More is going to happen on the 15th of August, which is my A-level results day, because after that, I feel like I can much easier um, give advice when you know what grades I've got and whether the advice is worked and has worked for me. Please, please make sure you leave a like and leave any comments and any requests. My email will be in the description too. Thank you very much for watching.